Hello, everybody. Uh, I don't know if, is the microphone working properly? Yes. Uh, this is not a margarita, it's a lemon, just in case. Uh, I'm French, so, but I'm serious when I'm in front of you. <laughs> uh, well, I try to be not that serious, though, but... Um, so, mediated device, I, I just saw the um, uh, Microsoft presentation and I saw kernel mediated uh, I.O. Maybe that's related, so I'll talk about... Uh, maybe we, we can uh, touch base on that. So, mediated device is about solving a problem which is the size and the complexity of building a PMD in DPDK. Um, and it's also... Um, the ability to have um, DPDK deal with uh, uh, native uh, container interfaces. So how can we tap into VETH, for example? Uh, next speaker from Mellanox will talk about uh, bifurcated driver. I think both technologies are, are trying to address the same thing, which is we want the user land to be in control of the data path, but why replicating all the driver code from the kernel into user space? If you look at initialization code of a, of a PMD, of, of hardware, the complexities of the different hardware revisions with firmware tweaks, with different things that are already done in the kernel, why trying to do that again in, in user land? What's really interesting in user land is to deal directly with packets and with um, uh, with rings, not exactly how to uh, set the interface up or down or how to actually uh, enable or disable pause frames. That's not that, we should be able to leave that to the kernel to do it. So the, the current model is about leveraging UIO or VFIO to do to access the packets from the kernel, from the, from the device. Doing so, you lose the kernel device driver and then you, you have no more net device in the kernel. So you're losing uh, ETH tool, ME tool, if config, etc., on, on the interface. Uh, Intel has created uh, VFIO MDEV, which is an extension of VFIO. This is upstream since kernel 4.10. It is used to actually do uh, user-land access to GPUs. So that's exactly what we want to have. That is a, a technology that allows the user-land to access uh, the native hardware, yet the kernel is, is still in charge of, of, of controlling the device. So this has been used by... Um, Today on the uh, I915, which is a, a chip, Intel chip for the graphics. So it allows to, to display a number of virtual uh, GPUs through QMU. But more importantly, the Intel uh, guys have developed the technology to allow user land expo exposure of GPUs, but also network interfaces and uh, accelerators of any kind. So from the beginning, uh, VFIO MDEV has been designed to expose to user land some aspects of uh, the kernel device objects. So the benefit of using the user land IO but keeping the kernel driver below uh, should benefit a number of different communities. So DPDK is one. Uh, VPP is a second because VPP also have some uh, native device drivers. They have one for uh, the host user. There is one for uh, the Intel 10 gig link, 10 gig NIC, sorry. So this would simplify creating uh, PMDs or drivers for all those specific envir environments. So I mentioned DPDK, VPP, Open Data Plane, but also many others, like if you have a, a companies working on the time-sensitive network, they want to have a very fast access to, uh, to packets through maybe a specialized network, well, a network stack, optimized for specific workload. 
And their environment is such that they already have an application that's running. And it's not architected for ODP, for VPP, or, uh, or DPDK. So then they want to have a simple way to have an upstream solution to capture the packets directly from the hardware with, any, with no framework. So this is the idea, the, 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 the driving idea behind this project is to make sure that all the network, the kernel drivers with a limited set of effort can expose rings and the data path to use on applications and to a very wide range of uh, use on applications, DPDK being one of them. One thing which is important is that even if we open that capability, it should not increase security uh, uh, problems. And also that it is not just PCI based, so that it can address all the various architectures that we can find uh, on the market. There is one uh, particular thing that is not, uh, uh, not yet fully uh, well exposed here, is that the, the only VFIO with IOMMU should be used. So no tricks to play with physical memory uh, the whole process should, uh, to have proper isolation and security should only use VFIO with IOMMU support. So no, no VFIO, no MMU support for that because dealing with uh, security aspects when the kernel may be in charge of one port of a card while the user land is in charge of another port of the same card, uh, dealing with physical memory makes a big problem. So we have to use entirely VFIO with IO and MMU. So this means that for the moment, this solution is only applicable to bare metal until in the VMs there will be the VertIO IO and MMU, which allows IO and MMU applications to be used inside the VMs. So this is going to be upstream in the next, I don't know exactly when, uh, but ultimately, full VFIO implementation will be used, will be available in, in, uh, in VMs too. So there is a dependency here on this VertIO IO MMU availability to have a complete solution, bare metal and VM. We could say that the user land is taking care of everything related to data pass. So it could deal with rings and packet buffers, etc. But it looks like ring creation is a quite a complex topic. It depends on the hardware. It depends the, the time when you create the ring is very uh, hardware dependent. So rather than pushing that to user land, the only thing that the user land should care about is the, the, the kernel driver hands over the rings to your user land, and then your user land adds the packet buffers for those rings. And if there are any rings to be added, then the user land can ask through ETH tool or Netlink to add more queues. The kernel driver will do it, inform the user land that there are additional rings, and then the user land will uh, handle that, uh, uh, those new uh, uh, rings. So, Really, the idea is to keep the user land as small as possible and fully in charge of the only thing that really matters, which is the rings and the packets. So we did a, a test. Uh, how much, how, is it feasible? What are the problems? Uh, we took a Realtek uh, chip which is 10,000 lines of code in the kernel. And you see, um, to have uh, the user on aspect to what, what would be the equivalent of the, the, the PMD is about 100 to 500 lines of code to deal with the pa directly, natively, with the hardware descriptors and the packets. So that's extremely low. And it's, it, 
For each driver, it took us one week. So for the, the PMD driver community here, that's a very good value proposition because on one side, you have 10,000 lines of code, which requires a big team to manage. And then on the other side, for the, for the user, user loan, you only have a few hundred li lines of code to uh, fully leverage the hardware capability. With all the benefits of having the ETH tool, uh, uh, ME tool, if config, all those things running. Now, there are subtle problems to, to solve, and I'll talk about that uh, later. Um, I will skip that, which is an IO MMU refresh, uh, and about uh, how you handle DMA. So uh, time flies, so I need to... Uh, so the first thing to, to solve is that the VFIO MDEV that is currently upstream is not fully handling the IO MMU. So we had to, to extend the VFIO MDEV with proper IO MMU uh, handling. Uh, on, on another topic, which is the security, if you have one device may have one PCI ID, but it may have multiple ports. So in that case, if you want to have one port captured by the user and the other port captured still in the, under the control of the kernel, you can't uh, control the full PCI config space because then you would be messing with the kernel on the other side. So we have to design two modes, one is the full adapter is under the control of the user node. In that case, the user node can take over the, um, the PCI config space. Or if it's a mixed mode where some ports are under the, the kernel and others on the, on the user node, then we have to deal with some PCI uh, or system calls to, to be able to orchestrate the communications between the, uh, and, and isolate between the kernel and the user node. I was told by the Mellanox speaker that will come after me that Mellanox has some uh, nice features to have virtualized PCI config space that would allow a better uh, configuration. Um, the ring setup is, uh, as I said, it's complicated, but also it needs to deal with I, uh, VFIO complexities and, and domain setup. So if you look at the gory details of how IO, MMU, and VFIO are, are working, um, this means that the kernel at the beginning is allocating IO, MMU in a, in a specific IO VA for the device. But when we want to have it handled by DPDK, then there, there has to be a certain, let's say, DPDK IO virtual address space in which all devices will be mapped. So that is a constraint also that has to be, uh, to be dealt with the uh, IO MMU aspect. So bottom line, uh, we can all collaborate on, on, on making those PMDs less a pain than they are today. Uh, gaining um, access to uh, container networking allowing all those tools, TCP dump, et cetera, to be used on, on, the, uh, uh, on, on the network cards, and to allow different communities to share the same code for the drivers. For, for example, you can do a, a driver for VPP and DPDK, they, they will be very similar, which is not the case today. This will allow also other communities that do work in the automotive or in the industry environments that do not want to use DPDK or ODP or VPP to use their own stack and have a, a very clean uh, low-level interface. So I'm here just to share what we learned uh, while on this journey to make uh, uh, this packet framework. Uh, we'll be publishing the code for a, a few uh, device drivers so that you will see how they can be implemented in ODP, DPDK, and VPP. But if we can work together to make that a more uh, upstream technology, that would be great. 
and I'm out of time. Any questions for Francois Frederick? Hi, um, what about BSD? What about? BSD, and possibly future windows as well. B BSC? BSD, free BSD. Ah, free BSD. Um, I guess that's uh, a topic we haven't covered, but I don't see any problems uh, supporting free BSD. Does it have a VFIO? Does it have VFIO MD? <coughs> so won't won't work with uh, FreeBSD. But uh, that, that's always a trade-off between um, many different things, and you can keep the the UI model for for those. Uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. I'm afraid we're about five minutes behind in the program, so we better get going. But to, please uh, stop and, and talk with Francois during the break uh, if you have further questions. Uh, let's go ahead and get to our next uh, speaker. Ron thank you. Thank you, people.